Hello everybody. So the wait is over. The mystery of what car ended up replacing our Subaru Forester is right here. It's a 2024 Subaru Ascent. So we decided to keep it in the Subaru family. Uh, we liked our former Subaru and we really, I mean, we explored opportunity, like explored other vehicles as well. Uh, we tried to to test drive a Grand Highlander, but number one, uh, we were told that number one, the, the dealership didn't have any and then they brought out one that was fully loaded for way more money than, than this one. And then they said, well, you, you guys can't have it. It's under recall. So we're like, okay. And then we tried to do a Honda Pilot, um, seven passenger, obviously, and somehow just things didn't, didn't work out. So, so we ended up with this. Uh, we test drove a used one from 2021. Um, it, it, they all look the same. They haven't really changed since their inception. But that the 2021, it had like 21,000 miles, but it looked like it had like 51,000 miles. It, it had a light interior, spots on the seats, on the ceiling. It had a bit more equipment than this one. This is, by the way, a premium trim. Um, and you know what? And, and one of our neighbors have a black limited so we will take a quick look around it to kind of compare so this is a premium trim 2024 brand new uh we already have several hundred miles on it and uh yeah we just ended up getting this one with a black interior oh looks like looks like already either somebody rubbed up against the oh oh okay well, look at that what is that i think that didn't come out in the car wash or something um yeah so here it is so let's take a look so i do plan on making several videos this is an overview uh you know or a review video and then i'll i will make one you know the love and the hate although you know everybody knows that only love makes a subaru subaru but but th there's a little hate although I, I can't say hate but the the, the hate seems to be getting the views <laughs> uh which i already proved with my ford fusion video right there and of course airplanes uh, start flying overhead so here is what it is so number one the the color red we didn't really pick it but when we went to the dealership this is uh the color that was available they're kind of hard to find uh these cars there's not a ton of them although although they are pretty pretty po uh, popular so a premium trim it's a one step above the the very base model so what do you get well you get the looks i mean they all kind of look the same um there's many different trim levels um at the same time we did not want to get you know a 56 60 thousand dollar car we wanted to get a relatively reasonable trim level and we went with the premium because our our previous car was our forester was a premium trim uh which basically gets you all the stuff that we need and really nothing you don't but i'll take a i'll take a closer look but you know from the front I do kind of like these almost looks like like a jet intakes um you don't get the fog lights so that one the black one does have fog lights but they are the world so look at that those tiny 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 little fog lights uh where right here uh we don't have fog lights but that's where we'd have been look at this ginormous thing and the fog light would have been there but in any case from the front i mean i like how it looks but it is just looks pretty generic and you gotta give it to subaru as far as their corporate identity i mean they don't change their vehicles very often but when they do they make everything look exactly the same like it's kind of hard to tell this one let's say from from a forester or from an outback because they all kind of look the same uh, at least to me you know you, you know you're, you're welcome to disagree but from the front i mean it looks it looks good i can't say it, it you know it's not an attractive vehicle you have a like painted piano black thing here obviously all of it is plastic uh so again you don't really get any chrome i'll take a quick look at that vehicle just to compare and contrast after we're done with the exterior here uh, you get you know basic wheels obviously they're all you know rims they don't have hubcaps here uh some chrome around but not a lot uh, some of this is, you know, kind of, you know, quote unquote off roady. Although this this is a pretty heavy car, so good luck to anybody actually trying to off road this thing, especially with seven people inside. 
Um, and by the way, the reason why we even wanted this, we wanted a larger vehicle because there's four of us every once in a while. We'll bring a few other people. It was the Forester just wasn't doing it for us. And this is the first ever seven passenger vehicle in our family. Uh, the Forester was, was the biggest. Yeah. So kind of from, from the back also, while, while I'm down here, it, the same thing. It looks like a Forester. It looks like an Outback. It, it just, it has that look. I mean, they they have the symbol which looks awfully like a lot like a ford but i understand these stars they probably mean something uh the subaru the symmetrical all-wheel drive why do they want why do they have to put this up here i mean we know that pretty much every subaru is that there's a few exceptions out there when they partner up with other companies to make their like bmw what is it the, the brz or whatever those things called and you have the ascent uh, this is all plastic once again looks like either something didn't come off in the car wash or maybe somebody hit us already I don't know. <laughs> I know we didn't hit anybody. We do have the backup uh, Sensors they do beep very nice and the backup camera Dual exhaust real nice uh, We don't have the the tow hitch obviously we don't really tow anything and I don't believe That in on this trim level we don't have the kick you know the kick to open the rear tailgate but we do have a key right here so our former Forester had just a normal key uh, this one is that smart push button thing but we don't have the the kick to open so but we do have a button it's a proximity key so it is in the in your pocket it'll open up and that's about it we never really put anything on the roof so yeah we're not gonna get any accessories or anything Whew, I want to stand here in the shade it is scorching hot today almost 90 degrees with humidity so here's the exterior. Now, let me take a quick walk to that car right there. Um, and then I can just maybe compare and contrast. And look, there's another Subaru there, uh, an older Outback. Um, so we do have a few Subarus here in this parking lot. And where we live in Illinois, Subarus are pretty popular. It was really hard to find a new one, especially with the black interior. We found some with the, the like this, they have two options on this trim. Uh, they're all cloth seats, but they are heated. Um, the like really light tan, almost white, and the black. And the, the few that we found, uh, they were all used, uh, they were all white interior. We try to find the black interior because the white interior just looked pretty. Uh, I mean, it, when it's brand new, it looks fine, but it is just not practical color. Uh, so that's why we were like, well, we need to, we want to have a black interior. All right, so here is the limited one. Like I said, I, I, I know the neighbors, they're probably leasing it because they had a, an, another Ascent and they got rid of it. So that's that's also a new one. So look, so this is the limited trim. I mean, it looks nice and black. It's got the fog lights. It's still got the jet engine looking intakes. Uh, the rims are painted. Okay, you have, you have like more stuff. You have like chrome caps or steel caps on here. Uh, you do have the ginormous uh, sunroof, which we did not get here. Uh, this one has the limited written across it. So the way that they're doing it now, they don't really have, they don't put like premium the limited. So they, if you go on the premium, uh, which is we do, they don't put anything. So on the limited and they do have also an Onyx trim level, which is very weird. It's a very weird trim level. They put like fake leather in there. They put a few other things. I guess you, it gives you a, a, like a few extra options to choose because that one has zero options. We can get any options on it. Uh, this one looks like got like the cross members on it. Yeah, so, you know, a few, few extra things here and there, different rims. Uh, I got this, the sunroof uh, here. Oh, well, you can't really see. You do get the leather. Uh, we have the cloth, but we wanted the cloth. Um, the leather is kind of not really practical. So, so this is where we have this one. So we are walking back. And what we have here, let's look at the inside. So the outside, once again, nothing real special here. Oh, looks like the owner, the owner of that Subaru just walked towards the car. So once again, put your hand in there, opens up. And here's what we have. So this trim, now once again, keep in mind, it's a premium trim. Uh, so not a ton of stuff. Um, no memory. Oh, I think the Limited also has um, uh, the memory seats, which would be right here. We don't have that. So look, all of this is not leather. This is all vinyl and it is extremely hot. Now the black interior, it's understandable. 
I think I'm gonna start it up in a few, few few minutes. But basically what we have is this trim right here, this is all plastic, made it look like a carbon fiber. I mean, I don't understand why they wanted to do that. Um, they could have just, I don't know, maybe just made it a little different color of the black, but they made this fake thing. Power mirrors, windows locks, two front or auto, plenty. Oh, so this is the funny part. Uh, this car is known in the industry to be advertised with 19 cup holders for seven people I don't know why it's necessary, but here it is. So there's there's two right there as you can see um, Inside here cloth really comfortable seats, but I am kind of bummed out No lumbar support of any kind even the manual one so you do get the lumbar support on a higher trim levels I, I, I kind of miss it. I wish it had it, but it is what it is. Can't can't complain. Down here, you have the power trunk. You have the um, the override for the all interior lights. So when you press it when you're driving it, all the lights come on. So it's pretty nice. And this is an interesting blank switch. I tried to find a picture of like the most fully loaded, which I think is the trim level, and it still shows pictures of it. Still shows that this is a blank switch. I opened the manual. Uh, and even in the manual where it shows like in the manual like this like if equipped no this button is always blank in any and all the pictures including the manual so this is like by design they don't have anything that would fit uh, that button so I found that to be pretty strange all right let's let's get in here oh yeah so put your foot on the brake the button and there you go all right oh looks like we are almost out of gas so you know what we're gonna go get some gas uh, for this thing Whew. all right let's kill this so here in the inside you see we already have 491 miles we already took this car to Michigan uh, for a weekend and we will do it again in a couple weeks all right let's do this let's turn the rear off yeah so here is where we are. So this, I like this display because uh, I know some cars these days, they have uh, all the stuff that's virtual and I think I need to lower it so it doesn't kill the audio. Um, I like the fact that it has physical gauges. I love physical gauges. I don't know why, call me old fashioned. Um, but yeah, I do like the screen in the middle. I mean, it is black and white, but once again, it shows all the information that you need. Oh, look at that, 97 degrees out there with humidity on top of it, so pretty bad today. Um, oh, but the AC is really nice. So what do you get in the premium trim level? You get physical gauges, you get uh, all this. So this is all the new 2024 redesign or, or, uh, or um, a refresh. The 2021 that we uh, tried to test drive, oh look, we got, we got Brittany, um, had a different, it had all the extra buttons, it had the little screen on top like the Forester did, and it had the little three pedal buttons that you would pull like right here, like our Forester had. This is the new one, they got rid of the buttons. They got rid of the different screen. I'll try to post a picture of them when I find one of the older style because the outside didn't really change much, uh, but the inside they did rework the screen. Pretty much very few physical buttons here. You have the, you can control the dual temperature. Here, let's get, let's get some air. Um, and the, the defrost and then the volume and the, and the tune. And then when you hold it, you can turn off the screen if it's bothering you. Uh, I wish that the display right here would be physical buttons like they could have just kept going and like made the screen a little shorter and then put like the fan buttons and stuff and then the heated seats which is part of the premium package they didn't they put everything in the screen but somehow the temperatures here I guess we can make it lower uh, they do it here but you can still control it this way or this way. I don't know. I mean, yes, there's part of me that says, you know what, if this ever, <laughs> if this ever fails, you're kind of stuck because you can't really even control your own temperature. But it is what it is, right? So that's that's what it is here. So we have the rear control, same thing. You can sync them, you can lock them. I'll show you in the back right here. You do have controls. You do get uh, heated seats in the higher trim levels. We do not. Yeah, the cloth seats are pretty comfortable. I mean, not gonna lie. Uh, here, let's go back to the to the steering wheel. You have your volume control, all this stuff, source. So this thing right here controls this screen. So you can see, yeah, it, it will show the, um, the PSIs when we start driving. All your stuff is here. 
70 miles to empty we're gonna go gas it up um, this button once again I was like okay what does this button do I went through every single screen con thinking that it will show more info this and that this and that I played around with this screen I'm like what does this button do I looked in the manual and they say this button is only used if you get like a check engine light or if you get some other uh, you know uh, dummy light you can press this button to get more info it's like what if you have a check engine light and first of all you have a giant screen here but in any case um i'm like that's very strange and then i remembered in the forester so you see here we have a button for trip and reset on the forester we had two sticks like coming from the display gauge one was the trip a trip b and then the reset and then the other one right here was a select and in the manual it was just not even mentioned like uh, something along the line of like select the display if equipped and then I looked across the entire internet and nobody could tell me what that thing is so I think it's the same thing I mean I like the fact that it clickable like very nicely clickable but I think they stole it from I think they stole it from um, like Audi and stuff like that uh, but yeah here he just clicks very nicely uh, you do get the smart cruise control that, that keeps the distance and it does have active uh, steering assist I will talk about it during my love slash hate video because I will, I definitely have some thoughts on that, but don't want to make this video three hours long. Um, oh, the paddle shifters. This thing, this thing is hilarious. So right here in the shifter, you do have a CVT, put it in the drive, put it in the manual and you can shift yourself. Well, with one exception, it's a CVT, so who cares? It's not gonna really do anything for you. But in any case, it is here. I played around with it. It's pretty useless. You have auto headlights. You have standard windshield wipers, front and back. Not not auto, not rain sensing like on the on the Fusion. But once again, it is what it is. Here, they substituted the little displayer, the display gauge that was on top before. They substituted it with this. This is all configurable. You can switch around. I think if you press it. Yeah, there you go. Like you can change the calendar. You can see kind of the outline. It'll tell you what you want. I mean, it's pretty useless. So I set it up like an average speed, but you can, if you want to change the average speed of like the angle at which you're driving or the acceleration pedal feel, I don't really know. I mean, okay, maybe we can play around with it and you can see, okay, so how much of a gas you're using? Like the, <laughs> I don't know what that, why is that important? But that's what that display was that they used to have on top here with the three buttons uh, on the steering wheel. Um, yeah, the X mode, this one comes standard with the basic X mode. That basically is like your off-road mode. So you click it on, it switches to the X mode here, and it switches like a hill descent, the little green button, that little green light. So again, we'll try it in the winter time, but obviously we're not doing any off-roading in this vehicle. That's just, you know, here you go. Uh, the rest of the stuff, it does have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So really nice when, when you sync up your Bluetooth, it does it all automatically. So that means you don't have a nav system in here, but if you do Android Auto, it will, it will do like the full screen map. Uh, so that's real nice. Uh, and it's once again, my wife has um, Apple, you know, iPhone, I have Android. We can both make our cars uh, work and then when both I mean, we can both make our phones work. And then when we're both in the car, it will give you, um, it will give you basically an option which one uh, you would like to select. All right, moving along. Yeah, so this one, the, the heated seats are part of the premium. We wanted the cloth. We did not, oh, well, kids' shoes are there. Um, we didn't want the leather because, you know, I don't know, it's cold in the, uh, it's cold in the winter, it's hot in the summer, um, so cloth it is. Once again, you have like this nice little shelf with this carbon fiber material. You have a pretty nice si whoops, sizable glove box. So again, more cup holder space. Sorry, got to pause. There you go. So right here, you have your CVT. You have another blank button. This button, when you have a higher trim level, uh, this is your camera button. So if you press it on like the little bit higher trims, you can get um, like just some, like some 360 cameras. And I think on the highest trim, if you press it, you even have like the, the front, like off-roader camera, which once again, 
it's all gimmick. This car, I think, weighs like 4,400 pounds. So trying to off-road off in this thing is going to be a disaster. Uh, here, this is a nice, although it doesn't show right now, but when you have people in the back seats and even like on the middle row, it'll tell you who's buckled in and who isn't. And it's smart enough to know if there's a car seat in there, so it won't, it won't do anything. Here you have, we don't have a sunroof right here, and it wasn't an option. I would have loved to have it. It was not even an option. The premium trim level, it's probably their most popular, and it's almost like entry level for them because, hello, because uh, they, don't, they don't have any options. If you want to step up to the Onyx, which we didn't really like, it was like three grand more, came with fake leather, with, like, you could get a sunroof, I think, on that, and a few cosmetic things, so we didn't really care about it. So, but yeah, you have your glasses holder, you have your back view thing, you have your SOS button. There you go. This this looks <laughs> more complex than it has to be, but it is what it is. You have your mirror compass with your home link uh, and self dimming, so that's nice. More cup holders, storage right here. This does not. This is once again, it's covered with this kind of fake leather, and you can kind of see it's vinyl. I think it's actually the same material that the leather seats are made out of in the Onyx, aka the fake leather. Uh, so yeah, you do you do get it because it's black. Have like it turns white for some reason. So maybe if this car was had a white interior, you wouldn't see it. But we just it. I don't know. It looked pretty bad. Here you do have all kinds of connections, but once again, it's wireless. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. So this is just if you want to charge it. Uh, you know, we do have now that the iPhones switched to a USB type C we have a standard uh we don't we don't have to fight over chargers let's see here what do you got you got the fuse box there I'll show you the engine and this is really so let's go into the middle seats and the back seats and this is really why we ended up buying um uh the the ascent once again you have a cup holder here you have more cup holders there this is obviously after aftermarket but you can see the windows they come prepared with on a higher trim level you do have a built-in sunshade that just pops in probably right in there um yeah so this is where i would probably sit to drive and maybe even a little closer i, I didn't really check this but yeah we have one car seat there and look i mean kids are already going a little beast mode here and by the way this is not i bought this separate i'll talk about it in the love and hate video this is this did not come with the car but you can see from here yeah you have all the controls you don't have heated seats in the back but it is what it is you do have controls in general you do have more cup holders here which kids will not be able to reach well it was the youngest one here on the higher trim levels you can get a household output but here you do have your standard charging um yeah, so look at this. So look how much room is back here. Let's let's look on the other side. So I think this is where my wife sat last time she was. It's got a lot of room. And if you can hear, if I just move this here, uh, I gotta vacuum this thing. I already vacuumed this thing. All right, let's go back. Check this out. So. This car, what in the world? It's a fish. I don't even know what this is anymore. So first of all, yeah, you do have air vents back here, which I haven't turned off at the moment. You have this. You can control pretty good. Like, look how much room you can have here. So this is the closest you can get it. And you can kind of see I have plenty. Look at that, that's a limo style. So you can give the back passengers a lot of room. So let's see, you know, we're gonna run an experiment. So I'm here, let's go in the back, in the way back. So first of all, to get, to get it going, you just do this. You know, obviously the car seat, uh, and in this case a booster seat, can be removed. And you can do it one, one slide and you can get in the back. Now, we got some junk in the trunk, but we're gonna undo this one seat. All right, there it is, look at that. I'm gonna climb in the back, and I did this test at the dealership before we bought it. And so you, first of all, you do have this nice handle right here. I can fit, now, this is with the seat I believe all the way up, I mean all the way back, but I do fit. See, look at that. Hello, everybody. I mean, I do fit back here. <laughs> I, 
I don't want to say that I fit perfectly, but I do fit and my kids will fit. Now we have another seat right here that fits too. And yes, we do have some crap here, but it's, you see that? We do fit. So until my kids turn into teenagers, this would be great. And well, there's four of us. There's four of us now. We don't plan on having any more. And by the way, yeah, these things, they are aftermarket. You see, this is what came with the car. This is an aftermarket piece. I'll talk about it in a different video. But it can work. And also, you can do it this way. And if you don't want to be a jerk and you want to give your back passengers a little room, once you sit in it, I think it locks in, you can, you can do that. So, here it is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, I think it's some sort of an arts and crafts thing that ended up being lost here. All right, now, whoops. You have power trunk, which, or lift gate, which I am kinda surprised that it, it has it at the premium level, but, Let's see, we're gonna move this down, move this, and we're gonna fold. Huge trunk. And once again, see you can see some sand because we already used it. This liner, it's an aftermarket liner. These liners are also aftermarket liners. I still have to cut out the little holes. So like this thing, it needs to fit through here, but I need to cut it out because uh, this is an aftermarket. But yeah, you got four people, which is once again, most of the time, you have a huge trunk and that's what we need. Uh, with the back seats, you know, unfolded, obviously it cuts it down to here, but still plenty of room. So, uh, back here you have clothes, and once again, you can do it from the remote, or you can do it from the inside. It's great, and that's it. Now, let's do this. First, oh, it looks like some tree sap. And you know what? I lied. This is too far for me. I need to move up closer. So, let's do this. I'm moving it up, I'm moving it up. There you go. All right, let's go for a drive. So, actually, the room, uh, I'm 5'11". Uh, I'm not the skinniest person in the world, but let's go for a drive, and then once we are at the gas station, I will show you how much re rear space there actually is. And you see, you do have, obviously, a backup camera, and you do have the sensors, so it does beep. And it does have like the, um, the cross traffic stuff. So it does tell you uh, when you have, uh, you know, cars on, on coming. So it's a pretty smart system. You do have the eyesight on this thing, the, the two cameras watching the road. So again, there's some stuff that I don't like, but I don't want this video to be affected by it because so again, we're already running 27 minutes. So driving this thing, first of all, it does not drive like an SUV. It, it's not harsh. It's not an off-roader. The tires are designed for for the for the hard stuff. It's not designed for the off-road. Um, anybody buying? And by the way, yeah, the flickering you can probably see on the camera. Yeah, that doesn't happen in real life. So it has. It's pretty quiet. Uh, the road noise is pretty minimal. It drives like a big car. Um, Actually, the Forester was a bit more jumpy, um, and it does it was geared more towards the off-road. This one is nice and smooth and soft, quiet. Acceleration, oh, I forgot to show you the engine. You see, I'm not an engine person, so I guess I'll show it to you at the gas station. Um, the engine, it's a 2.4 uh, turbocharger. It's, by the way, it's my first ever car with a turbocharger. But Subaru, you guys probably already know, has really two engines that they stick in just about everything. Oh, the lane keep assist. Once again, another subject for another video. All the safety gear. I do have a, a love and hate relationship with that. So I will, uh, yeah, you see? <laughs> it triggers there, there's some settings in here that can be turned off but I'll once again I'll talk about it I know this video is already pretty long oh uh, yeah so a uh, Subaru has two engines a 2.5 liter they're all boxer engines that's like non-turbo that makes about 160 ish 170 ish and then this one is a 2.4 liter 
with a turbo that has, um, I think, 260 horsepower. So it's the same engine that they stick in everything that has like the XT, their their Outback XT. I think they used to have a Forester XT, uh, but this is what they stick in in their higher output. It's what they, what's what in the WRX, which I think is just a slightly different tuning here. Um, yeah, so I was a bit concerned, such a heavy car with a little engine like this, but it, it works, you know, it's not a speed demon. No, you can't really outrun a WRX with this, even with the paddle shifters and all that, but it's it gives it a nice, smooth acceleration. It can move out of its own way. It, on the highway, drives fine. It can accelerate just fine. And I'm not, not super concerned with it. Oh, speaking of Foresters, there's there's a Forester right there. Same color like we had before. So, all right, let, let me guys go. All right, so I'm going to get to the gas station. As you guys can see, it's averaging 21.9 miles per gallon. Once again, this is with the highway. Not the most fuel-efficient vehicle, but once again, the size of it, the weight of it, what it's capable of. Obviously, yeah, we did not buy it for the excellent fuel economy. The the high the Grand Highlander, whatever it's called, uh, had a hybrid option. But once again, we were pushing into the over 50k. This car, by the way, out the door was 41 grand. This is what we agreed on with the dealership. So the selling price, oh wow, there's a lot of people. The selling price was, I think, 37,800. Um, so 41 grand for those of you that are still watching this extremely, extremely long video. All right, let me gas it up and we'll show you the engine at the end. All right, so $60 and like 14 and a half gallons later, I'm back home. This is where I sit. This is the, exactly my driving position. This is with the car seat right here, plenty of room. Um, this is where, once again, depending on how you move the, the back seat. So again, this car has plenty of room, which I could never understand. Uh, this car, uh, I saw, I watched some other reviewers, they're saying it's small. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe if you compare it to a minivan, yeah, it's on the smaller side, but I, we didn't want the minivan. So here, there's plenty of room here, there's plenty of room in the back. I fit perfectly fine in all three rows. Um, obviously the back row, yeah, it's not the most comfortable, but it's functional. Um, and I don't know, it just, it seemed to work just fine. It's assembled, well, you guys can see it, team crafted in Indiana slash Oklahoma, um, I guess. So I know that the engine is um, and transmission are from Japan and then the assembly takes place in the United States. And this vehicle is for the United States market as well. So. Let's show you the hood. You don't have, whoops, you don't have a hood strut. You do have a prop right here, but I'm not gonna spend too much time. Here is the intercooler. Here is where it takes the intake from underneath uh, the hood. It feeds it right there. You have electric steering, uh, so you don't have, um, you know, steering fluid, but you do have brake fluid, your washer fluid, your coolant, the uh, oil filter is here and then your engine filter in here. And this one does have an in-cabin air filter. When the time comes to replace it, I will, and I'll make a video about that. But other than that, yeah, I mean, it's got plenty of room here. It's a small four-cylinder with a turbo. Who would have known? So there's that, yeah. And then I, I wish it had a hoot scoop, though, <laughs> like on a WRX. Looks like a piece of tape. And it's got some sort of a tracking. Oh, also, it does, it does have an app. Uh, that you can remote start it. It's free for three years. It's one of those things where uh, you will have to pay something after three years. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. And here is our 2014 Ascent uh, premium trim. Hope you guys like it. More videos to come soon. Thank you, everybody. Take care.